sends Attorney General to correct his error-riddle application for a stay on the no-confidence vote. PPP's Gail Teixeira scolds Professor Duke Pollard over attack on Chief Justice's ruling on no-confidence motion. Government using state resources for a political campaign. And in sport, Chris Gail announces return to one-day internationals with blistering ton. These and more right now on this our Wednesday, February 20, 2019 edition of News Update. Good evening, I'm Lashona Gomes Cornelius. Thank you for joining us. The appeal made by Attorney General in the confidence motion cases he lost has been delayed due to some blunders in the application he filed. He was asked to refile his applications before the matters can proceed. When the case was called today, the Attorney General was told of a few discrepancies in his application, which he must correct before the matter can proceed. The Attorney General's appeal was riddled with mistakes, and um, we spent the entire hearing trying to him trying to defend the indefensible. At the end of the day, he had to um, take an adjournment to correct all the errors because he omitted to name the leader of the opposition as a party in the appeal and he omitted to name Joseph Harmon, his own general secretary, as a party in the appeal. However, Williams claimed it is a minor matter which he will be able to correct before the day is out. He promised to refile his application by tomorrow. I don't know what happened on Friday, but apparently the state solicitor received some, some intimation or whatever. I don't know what it is. But the result is that she filed over another appeal with adding the name of um, the leader of the opposition. So I don't think not having the name in the first place, but the name was there in the appeal as a person interested. It's fatal. Nothing in a, any discrepancy in the rubric of a matter can be fatal. And there's ample authorities for it. And we, we in order to avoid delay, that's why we came out appealing already, you know. So I don't, I don't agree that it was something that, that you call an amendment within the rule. It's a simple um, discrepancy in, the, in that you didn't put the name from the, you didn't bring the name from the back and put it in front. The Attorney General is asking the court for a conservatory order preserving the status quo of the government. In essence, Williams wants the President, Cabinet and all Ministers of Government to remain in office until the hearing and determination of the appeal. He is also asking to have the rulings of the Chief Justice overturned. The CJ ruled that the confidence motion was validly passed, that Charandas's vote was legal and the cabinet was resigned. She also ruled that 33 is the majority of all elected members of the National Assembly. Reporting for MTV News Update, Godfrey Brooms. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. At Optic Vision Care, we value the power of your sight. And with our team of eye care professionals, you'll be in good hands. Come experience our comprehensive eye examination using state-of-the-art technology and specialized diagnostic equipment at four convenient locations. In Mahaika, Grove, Giftland Mall, and East Street. At Optique, we care, you see. Call us today, 227-7744. Visit Gaffer's Ironmongery Department for all your building needs. Bolts and nuts, zinc plated, high tensile, anchor bolts and treaded rods. Package nails for your convenience, screws for wood, metal and concrete. Building a fence, we've got cast iron railheads and decorative fencing, gate slides and pivots, razor and barbed wire. For your carpentry needs, we stock tight bond, wood glues and evo stick. Hasps and staples, hinges, butts, catches and brackets, and a wide selection of modern design cupboard handles and knobs. Secure your property and loved ones with quality Yale products such as padlocks, available in several sizes and types. Knobs, lever, deadlocks and decorative door locks. 
Moving heavy loads is easy with caster wheels and hand trucks that cater for any job. For construction, you've got scaffolding along with ladders, multi-purpose, extended, fiberglass and step ladders too. For everything you need under one roof, it's Gaffoos, the name you can trust. It happens. Your septic tank is full. All the waste from your toilet goes into your septic tank through the sewage line. When your tank is full, the two most common indicators are an overflowing tank and an overflowing toilet. It is recommended that Sivon's Waste Management empty your septic tank every two to three years to avoid any embarrassment. And before you can say, shh, it's gone. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice, the choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Your one-stop decor solution for gala dinners, weddings, birthdays, cocktail functions, backdrops, props, and more. Check out exclusive decor design, ground floor, city mall. We have a wide variety to suit your stylish seating and table decor, exclusive centerpieces, colorful maro, and much more. Working with a small budget? No problem. We've got you covered. Call 225-4434 or 657-0166. We listen, we create, you enjoy. When reliability is not an option, you need a supplier you can trust. This skilled technician depends on Farfan and Mendes for heavy-duty tools. This landscaper earns a living using still equipment. High rates of production and recovery lead to this sawmiller trusting his operation to wood miser. Mothers trust the water filtration systems for the health of their families. Thanks to the automatic backup systems, you'll never be left in the dark again. Farfan and Mendes, offering you solutions you can depend on. The People's Progressive Party has exposed the blatant lies of the PNC's commissioners and GCOM who are claiming that the electoral oversight body passed the motion to immediately commence house-to-house -house registration. The party in a statement said no such motion was brought before the commission's statutory meetings yesterday. Details from Sandy Ramatar. The People's Progressive Party has taken the Ghana Elections Commission to task over its illogical willingness to toe the government line and make the constitution subservient to its will. The party in a statement said the actions demonstrated by the commission will undoubtedly guarantee a push in the constitutional crisis. The government nominated commissioners and the chairman of the commission has voted to inform the president that it will not be ready to hold the election as is constitutionally due before the end of March. In addition to this, the Commission will need the National Assembly to approve added funds to conduct the elections. For this reason, the party finds it as a complicit to frustrate the timeline for elections and its intention to influence the court proceedings. The Constitution is clear that the judiciary cannot extend a deadline for elections, rather such an act remains in the remit of the legislature. The party said there would be a need for international action as was needed in the 1990 to ensure constitutional compliance. With this in mind, the party called on all citizens and the international community to condemn the Commission's complicity to violate the Constitution. The party warned that the country will be heading towards a constitutional crisis which will be held solely at the feet of the President. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. 
Economist and political commentator Raman Gaskin has roasted the GCOM chairman for siding with the government commissioners to prevent elections from running off within the constitutionally mandated 90 days period. Gaskin said this decision is a slap in the face of the ruling of the Chief Justice acting. GCOM yesterday passed a motion which says that the agency cannot hold elections within the three months window as mandated by the Constitution following a successful passage of a confidence motion. GCOM's motion was carried after the three government nominated commissioners, along with the chairman, voted in its favor. The opposition party has three commissioners. GCOM also wants money to hold the elections and approve the fresh house to house registration to create a new voters list. The current one expires at the end of April. It is against this backdrop that political commentator Raman Gaskin released a hail of criticism on GCOM, specifically the chairman and the government commissioners. Gaskin told this newscast that the commissioners and the chairman are complicit in delaying elections, thereby breaching the constitution. He bashed the chairman, retired Justice James Patterson, claiming he was politically appointed to execute the work of the PNCR. Gaskin affirmed that GCOM is a creature of the constitution and must be ready for elections at any point as the constitution provides. According to Gaskin, it is inconceivable that GCOM is asking for more time as the agency should have started preparing for possible elections since the confidence motion was laid in the National Assembly. The political commentator asserted that the Chief Justice and the Judiciary are being mocked and cast aside by virtue of this motion passed by GCOM. Chief Justice Acting Roxon George Wilshire on January 31 ruled that the confidence motion was validly passed and the cabinet has been dissolved. According to Article 1066 of the Constitution, the cabinet, including the president, shall resign if the government is defeated by a vote of a majority of all the elected members of the National Assembly on a vote of confidence. Article 1067 says the government shall remain in office and shall hold election in three months or such longer period as the National Assembly shall by resolution, supported by no less than two-thirds of the votes of all elected members of the National Assembly, determine, and shall resign after the President takes the oath of office following the election. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. Scathing criticism has come out against Justice Professor Duke Pollard for his condemnation of the Chief Justice's ruling asserting that she erred in her interpretation of the law on matters of the confidence motion. Details from Sandy Ramatar. Opposition Chief Whip Gail Tishera has upbraided Justice Professor Duke Pollard for his scatching criticism against the Chief Justice. Her statement came on the heels of the assertions made by the former judge of the Caribbean Court of Justice, Professor Duke Pollard. Justice Pollard had said that the government is in full compliance with the Constitution and that the Chief Justice misdirected herself in the ruling and matters of the confidence motion. Justice Pollard is an advisor to the Attorney General. The Chief Justice ruled that the opposition-sponsored confidence motion was validly passed in the National Assembly on December 21. She ruled that the cabinet automatically resigned on the night of December 21. And here is a man who is supposed to be of, of, of high repute coming out with an argument that, that is counter all these issues that are acceptable and values and, and principles are accepted not only in the legal world but also in the issue of, of law but also in the issue of what is parliamentary democracy and, and the foundation of it. So that he is trying to find a way to, to excuse and I guess maybe justify what comes next and that is the fact the government continues to operate as per norm. Tishira said the poor arguments are coded signals made in an attempt to influence the work of the judiciary to rule in the government's favor. She said the statements demonstrated that the Bar Association, which represents the interests of attorneys at law, erred in its interpretation of the law. Tishira said the judge who appears as an apologist for the government is harming his reputation and undermining his position. 
There's also a conflict of interest, for example. He's an advisor to the Attorney General who's gone to the court. Um, and, and so should he be writing in the papers? The Attorney General has had several lawyers saying what they've submitted to the court. And in fact, from his argumentation, it's exactly the same as the Attorney General. Therefore, wonders was he the one helping to craft it? And is it not a conflict of interest um, in, in, in him doing so? Um, but, you know, one, one doesn't want to cast aspersions, but it sounds as if the gentleman who has reached a rather mature age should not be singing for his supper. It's not time to sing for your supper. I believe when you reach your 80s, you shouldn't have to sing for your supper at all. Uncertainty looms as the president refused to operate in a caretaker fashion and will not budge to announce a date for elections. Attorney General Basil Williams has thrown support behind the decision of GCOM to have fresh house-to-house -house registration. More glaringly, he affirmed that no money can be given to GCOM as there is no cabinet to make the recommendation for it to be forwarded to the National Assembly. Attorney General Basil Williams today stated that the Guyana Elections Commission was correct to pass a motion to have fresh house-to-house -house registration to compile a new voters list. Yeah, but in 90 days, expiring doesn't mean anything. Though the former Attorney General Anil Nandlal claimed that the Constitution is not subject to GCOM, Williams claimed that the final say for elections rests with GCOM. The President couldn't fix a date for elections without consulting with the, with, with the Commission. Otherwise, it, it is foolishness. And let me say why. If the, gov if the President were to without consultation with GCOM as its readiness, fix a date for elections. Good, the date is fixed. When the election date approaches, GCOM then says, we won't be able to make this date. What happens? Furthermore, Williams noted that the money requested by the elections agency cannot be granted as only cabinet can make such recommendations to the National Assembly. Currently, there is no cabinet a ruling made by the Chief Justice acting. You know the effect of the decision of the Lord Chief Justice is that there will be no funding because there's no cabinet. Be aware of that. Only the cabinet could recommend and consent to financial bills going to the, um, to the parliament for passage. And remember the opposition was saying the only role the government has is to be able to go to parliament and get money for GCOM to conduct the elections. But that can't happen. Meanwhile, Nandlal claimed that the decision of GCOM not to hold the elections within the three months window will be examined to ascertain if the constitution was breached. That is another set of decisions that will have to be examined to see whether or not they have not breached the constitution. GCOM readiness is not something that is decided upon at its own whim and fancy. GCOM readiness must be based upon the constitutionally due time for election. Reporting for MTV News Update, Godfrey Brooms. The Partnership for National Unity Alliance for Change Coalition is campaigning heavily on state resources. And some observers have noted that this is a blatant abuse of taxpayers' money and a possible violation of the law. What was labeled as government business turned out to be a massive elections campaign when a large ministerial convoy ventured to reach a nine upper tackle to upper executable at the weekend. Nineteen ministers, ministers spent three days visiting various communities making grand promises in exchange for votes. At the community of Tiger Pond, Minister of Citizenship Winston Felix made it clear that he was there simply to garner votes. Communities Minister Wana Bulkan recalled that only 39 residents voted for the APNU AFC coalition at the last general and regional election in 2015. He urged that this time around more residents vote for the coalition. For the coalition. The coalition government has been accused by many, including opposition members and independent political commentators, of using taxpayers' money to fund its elections campaign. 
Minister of State Joseph Harmon recently denied that these outreaches are part of the coalition's elections campaign strategy. He insisted that it was strictly government business. But the outreach in Region 9, which was branded government business, shows that APNU AFC is campaigning on state resources. Both APNU and AFC, when they were in opposition, strongly criticized the use of state resources for campaigning, a practice they are openly engaging in today. The coalition has also been accused of forcing state agencies such as the Guyana Revenue Authority to attend party-sponsored events. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Secure your property, secure your life, get the best security service from us at KGM Security Services Incorporated. Highly trained armed and unarmed officers at affordable rates. We offer armed mobile patrols, personal security, cash escort, alarm monitoring, quick response units, also rental of executive vehicles with armed guards. 74 Axora Avenue, Bellier Park, Georgetown. Contact us on 663-3227-699-0084 or 654-1800. KGM Security Services Incorporated. We are your source for security. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Welcome to Rossignol's Butchery. Here you'll find the freshest, most tender and flavorful meats, including steaks, burgers, sausages, minced meat, fish, and more, plus packaged meats and cheeses. All this in a highly hygienic atmosphere. In our store, there is a wide variety of canned goods, sauces, and marinades. Our friendly staff will cater to all your needs. Rossignol Butchery. We meet your needs. 7374 Church Street, Georgetown. Telephone 223-0004. John Lewis Styles, simply different. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing! I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our locations to get the best in tiles. Lens, our product, your creation. 
For the best in truck spares, Daff and Cummings, it's A1 Auto Value New Road Freedom Hoop on the west side. Check them out today for seals, alternators, filters, air valves, pistons and rings, air dryers, shocks, bearings and a whole lot more. Parts and accessories for cars and minibuses. Call today on 254-0890. 64 New Road Freedom Hoop on the west coast of Demerara. A1 Auto Value. Performance without compromise. Welcome back. You're watching MTV's News Update. The Integrity Commission wants top members of the Ghana Police Force as well as operatives of the Special Organized Crime Unit, the State Asset Recovery Unit, and the Financial Intelligence Unit to declare their assets. The Constitutional Commission intends to lobby for these agencies to be included. Officials of the Ghana Police Force are on the Integrity Commission's list of those public officials required to declare their state assets information. According to the Chairman of the Integrity Commission, Kumar Dursami, the Commission will be submitting recommendations on the request to further widen this list. Dursami indicated that the recommendations will seek to have members from the State Assets Recovery Agency, SARA, and the Special Organized Crime Unit, SOKU, to be put on that list. Soku is currently responsible for probing financial crimes while Sarah was established to track a stolen state assets. This, Dorosami indicated, is pivotal in addressing the issue of corruption and discrepancies among such individuals while improving their integrity working in public office. But once they're in the schedule, you know, I think they should be because the Commissioner of Police is not the only person who ought to be accountable to the public for the monies that they receive. So we have to expand. The schedule has to be expanded somehow. And we're looking at it, and we all can only make a recommendation. And the minister comes from, we'll pick it up from there. Dorosami warned that those individuals refraining from submitting their declaration on state assets owned will be dealt with in accordance to what is lawful. Dorosami further indicated so far the commission has published five lists of defaulters bearing eight to seven names. As for the lists for the Ministry of Finance and the Judiciary, those will be published at a later time. The chairman noted that the commission will not use any discretion as it relates to publishing the names of individuals. With that, Dursami encourages those public officials to render their declaration, for it is in their interest to do so. The public will have doubts if you see you putting up a big house, they want to know well, something is wrong, or something may be wrong, and they're curious and they may cast aspersions. In a case when you have your declarations in, and they're correctly put in, and the truth are in those declarations, then you don't have to worry. Of 1,306 declaration forms sent out, only 590 were received by the Commission, while 716 have not declared any of their assets. So far, no one has been sanctioned. Oil and gas company Tulu has hired a drill ship to begin drilling for oil in the Jetrolu prospection, the Orendu block offshore Guyana. Details from Sandy Ramatar. Oil and gas company Tulu has hired a drill ship for oil in its Orendu block offshore Guyana. Eco Atlantic, a partner in the project, has informed. Eco Atlantic confirmed that a contract secures the rig for transport at the end of May, targeting a June 2019 spot date. The company said that the partnership factored in the fact that the drill ship was already operating in a similar drilling environment. The Orenduke partners are currently reviewing plans for a second well with plans to formalize them in the coming week. The Stena Fourth is a sixth-generation drill ship owned by the Stena Drilling, which will drill the 250 million barrels at Jetcholobe Prospect on the Orenduke block. The Stena Fourth is harsh environment, a dynamically positioned class 3 drill ship, capable of operating in up to 10,000 feet of water to a maximum drill depth of 35,000 feet. Eco Atlantic holds a 40% working interest in the blocked with operator Tolo Oil, holding the remaining 60%. The partners have approved the majority of the rig servicing contracts to ensure smooth and timely operations with the Senna Fort. A Grove East Bank Demerara man was this morning found dead in his home and police are trying to ascertain the circumstances surrounding his death, Newsroom reported. The website identified a dead man as 32-year-old Rayon Angel. He was a father of two who was employed at the Guyana Shore Base. 
According to Newsroom, the man's mother tried contacting him over the last two days but was unable to get onto his phone. On Wednesday, she, she called his workplace and was told that he was not at work. As a result, the father visited a home at 3rd Street Grove. When calls went unanswered, his brother broke open the door and found his lifeless body. The police were called to the scene and are trying to ascertain how the man died. Neighbors said the man lived at a house with his wife, but he was alone for a few days following a disagreement. A fire of unknown origin in the wee hours today destroyed the entire Moon supermarket situated along the Labon Intention Public Road, East Coast Demerara. Three persons are said to have sustained minor injuries. The incident occurred about five hours and based on information provided to this newscast, injured our Chinese national, his wife and infant child. According to one eyewitness who lives not far from the supermarket, on arriving with other individuals at the scene, he observed a couple along with their child clinging on to the grillwork at the front of the building, screaming for help. With the assistance of another Chinese national, the man indicated that they were able to free the individuals. The injured were subsequently taken to the Georgetown Public Hospital for medical treatment. The man explained by the time the fire service arrived at the scene, the entire building was engulfed. Added to that, they came without any water, he remembered. We were scared, but we tried to save them as much we could do. This okay. same gate here. We we get them out from. Fire well, people service. was calling the fire service all the time when the fire service like long to come. Oh. When they came, they didn't have water either. Oh, they get water, they, they look and they get water from the drain over there. The building which housed the supermarket is reported to have been owned by the individual who owns the adjacent building which was partly scorched. When approached regarding the losses incurred, the property owner, still in shock, could not speak on the matter. Several hours later, when the fire quelled, our news team observed individuals packing a number of damaged goods. When informed of this, head of the fire prevention department, Andrew Holder, in disbelief, indicated that the ranks of the Ghana police force were supposed to have cordoned of the area and that no one is supposed to venture onto the premises. Holder indicated that he would have the matter be looked into. As regard the origin of the fire, Holder indicated that investigations are ongoing. Distinguished law professor Rudolph James passed away on Monday in the United States, where he had traveled to seek medical treatment after falling ill last year. He was 85 at the time of his death. Professor James, who taught law in Guyana and Africa, also headed the University of Guyana's Department of Law from 1999 to 2004. Most recently, he served on an advisory committee for the establishment of a local law school and as a commissioner on the Commission of Inquiry established to examine and make recommendations to resolve issues and uncertainties surrounding the individual, joint or communal ownership of lands. Professor James also co-authored a book with fellow Professor Harold Lutchman titled Law and the Political Environment in Guyana. President David Granger joined the list of persons who were saddened by Professor James's death. Here is Celine Griffith with your court roundup. <music> Clark was today placed before the court for allegedly assaulting a police officer. Mark Edwards, 26 of Lot 148 Melanie Damishana, East Coast Amararo, pleaded not guilty to the three charges against him. He is accused of behaving in a disorderly manner, resisting arrest and assaulting Carl Pedro, a police officer acting in the execution of his duties. Police prosecutor Sion Blackman objected to bail, citing the prevalence of the offense, and told the court that on the day in question, Officer Pedro was performing his duties when he spotted the defendant in a heavily tinted vehicle. He approached the defendant, told him of the offense, and invited him to the breakdown police station. While in the compound, the defendant began using indecent language towards the officer and eventually slapped him in the face. As such, the prosecutor strongly objected to bail. Bail was refused and Edwards was remanded to prison until February 27. In another matter, a man today appeared before Magistrate Faith Magusti on a narcotics charge. David De Silva pleaded not guilty to the charge against him, which stated that on February 18 at Lodge Housing Scheme, Georgetown, he had 627 grams of cannabis for trafficking purposes. Police prosecutor C.M. Blackman objected to bail, citing the nature and prevalence of the offense. He further told the court that the haversack containing the suspected narcotic was found on the defendant, and when asked, he allegedly claimed ownership. Bail was set to the tune of $250,000, and De Silva is scheduled to return to court on March 13. Meanwhile, 
a homeless man was today sentenced after he appeared before the court on a break and enter and larceny charge. Jarmin Johnson pleaded guilty to the charge which read that on February 17 at Brigdam Jarshang, he broke and entered the shop of Ashanda Austin and stole a quantity of drinks and confectionery valued $17,800. The man told the court that he has nowhere to live. As such, he sleeps outside and guards the woman's shop. He further stated that he went away and left the shop unattended and when he returned he found it open. He claimed the owner told him that he would have to be charged for the offence, hence his guilty plea. The man told the magistrate that all he requested was a short sentence. Jermaine Johnson was sentenced to six months in prison for the offence. Finally, a teen was today hauled before magistrate Faith Magassi on several robbery under arms charges. 19-year-old Mario Walters of Deefield Sophia denied all charges against him. The charges alleged on February 17 at Cemetery Road, Jarshung in the Lerapentir Cemetery while in the company of others and armed with guns, he robbed Derek Austin, Elton David and Desri Austin of $240,000, $31,000 and $51,500 respectively. The prosecution objected to bail based on the nature of the charge, the penalty it attracts as well as the fact that the defendant was positively identified by the victims and a dangerous weapon was used during the incident. The court heard that on the day in question, the virtual complainants were at the cemetery painting the tomb of a loved one when they were approached by the defendant held at gunpoint and relieved of the items mentioned in the charge. Bail was refused and Walters was remanded to prison until March 6. Reporting for MTV's Court Roundup, Celine Griffith. Coming up after the break, MTV's Sport Update and more. Stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens available in tinted or clear complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Sankar's Auto Works. Exceptional service. GBTI is your Guyanese bank. A bank that understands every customer's unique needs, opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. At GBTI, we see you for you. Whether you're buying a new home or car, planning your next vacation or retirement, saving for your child's future, or whether you're ready to take that bold step of investing in your dream business idea, we are with you every step of the way. We hear your stories and watch you focus on your dreams as we share your aspirations. We are more than just banking. We are a family. We are part of your community. Our commitment extends way beyond the walls of our branches and is demonstrated every day in the opportunities we provide to our individual and business customers. The support, time, and commitment we give back to communities across Guyana to help improve the lives of our Guyanese families. Because we see Guyana through your eyes. Everything is connected. Our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Beeson Windows and Doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property or just upgrading your home they got you covered Beeson windows and doors 
providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 622-6943. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26 or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Are you invited to that important event but don't know what to wear or frustrated you're wearing the same dress as everyone else? You crave for this exclusive look? Then do just that with dresses from Exclusive Dresses to Impress. Visit Exclusive Dresses to Impress at Giveland Mall. Contact number 6570166. Beyond all limits, being dependable means everything to Mac SA, a company founded in 1957. We produce the highest quality batteries, tailor made to the needs of our clients. Extreme weather conditions. Mac is one of the leading brands in the world because we offer high performance solutions. Mac is number one in the manufacture of portable power products because we join world class products with world class service. Batteries produced by Mac are superior products thanks to the technology employed in their design and the use of the highest quality materials, calcium reinforced with silver. More than 60% of the vehicles assembled in the Andean region for Japanese, American, and European car makers use our batteries. Mac means world-class products, excellent customer service. Mac batteries, world-class energy. The power is yours. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and Napa batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to the MTV Sport Update. Gail's penchant for clearing the boundary when it finally came out of hiding carried him to 135 off 129 balls, but also caught on with his teammates who added 11 sixes to his 12 for a world record, 23 sixes in their total of 360 for eight. Back in West Indies side for the first time since their home ODI series against the Bangladesh last July, Gail brought up his 24th ODI 100 with a single of Chris Wokes and soaked up the moment, dropping to his knees, arms outstretched, before holding his bat aloft by the toe with his helmet perched on top of the handle. Having made himself unavailable for subsequent tours of India and Bangladesh to play the Afghanistan Premier League and the T20 League, Gail took time to settle, but once he did, he put on quite a performance. After 14 overs, Gail had 12 of 36 balls. By the end of the 35th, he had faced 100 balls for his century. Meanwhile, West Indies remain hopeful Kimar Roach will be available for their World Cup campaign, despite him being forced out of the ODI series against England. Roach, who carried a heavy workload in the Test Series victory over England, reported back pain in the last few days. He was subsequently sent for a scan that showed a stress reaction in the back. Cricket West Indies are adamant it is not a stress fracture. 
Roach was man of the series in the test victory over England. He bowled more overs than any of his colleagues, however, and with Kimo Paul suffering an injury in St. Lucia, he may have been asked to deliver more overs than was ideal in that final game. With 80 ODIs behind him, Roach is one of the more experienced seamers in the West Indies' likely World Cup squad and his loss would be significant. West Indies currently have no plans to call up a replacement into the ODI squad, though it remains likely that Andre Russell will be added to it before the series ends. If Roach is to play any part in the World Cup campaign, it is likely he will have to play some part in the West Indies' tour of Ireland in early May, which sees them play in a tri-series also involving Bangladesh. He is currently scheduled to travel on the tour in the hope he can prove his match fitness during it. West Indies also have three unofficial warm-up matches ahead of the World Cup. There could be an unusual look to the West Indies squad. CWI are happy for any of their players involved in the IPL to take full part in the tournament, so the Ireland tour may provide opportunities for fringe players, including those who have impressed on an A-tour to Kenya that is likely to precede it. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV Sports Update. The West Indies cricket team put starry-eyed young players through their paces during a meet-and-greet training session at the Kensington Oval in Barbados last weekend. They were filming as part of the lead-up to a special event spearheaded by UK National Committee for UNICEF and the International Cricket Council called One Day for Children to harness the power of over 1 billion cricket fans and the best international one-day cricket teams to support children in danger around the world. The event will take place during the ICC Cricket World Cup 2019 this summer, when England will face India on June 30. The aim of the partnership is to raise £1 million for UNICEF's work for children over the course of the tournament, held in the UK from May 30 to July 14. Children came from both primary and secondary schools across the island and were given top tips by Captain Jason Holder and other members of the squad. In support of UNICEF's safeguarding messages, Holder highlighted the importance of bringing any cases of suspected child abuse out in the open, saying, Break the silence. If you see something or know something, do something, say something. Chelsea Griffith, reporter for MTV Sports Update. The 2019 edition of the Guyana Fitness Games, the challenge organized by Carrie's Engineering Fitness Challenge, is set to lift off next month. The best male and female athletes are set to showcase their skill sets, including the reigning and three-time fittest male athlete, Delon Mahadio, and 2018 female winner, Delisa Donis. The event is set to create a first in Guyana as all the competitors will be receiving a cash prize, while there will be a teen challenge featuring fit youths between the ages of 13 to 18. It was disclosed that a few of the events that will test the athletes to the hilt include the event 2, double trouble times 3, 3 rounds for time, and event 3, weightlifting spring. Action is set for the National Park Tarmac on Sunday, March 31, from 13 hours. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV Sports Update. The Ghana Basketball Federation has announced the selected team to compete in Group B of the FIBA America 2021 pre-qualifiers in Colombia. Qualified teams in Group B are hosts Colombia, Bolivia, Guyana and Paraguay. The competition is set to bounce off on February 22 to February 24 in Tunja. The top two teams from this group along with the top two teams among Antigua, the Bahamas, Belize and Cuba will join Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Chile, Dominican Republic, Mexico, Panama, Puerto Rico, Uruguay, the United States, Venezuela and the British Virgin Islands for the qualifiers. The GBF was forced to trim their trial squad down to 10 players due to financial constraints, but nevertheless, the only thing standing in their way is their will and belief which they can overcome. Considering the team's outstanding performance last year at the Caribbean Basketball Championships where skipper Stanton Rose dominated, the team is hopeful that they have what it takes even though the America Cup is higher than the CBC. The squad comprising of both locally and internationally based players which departed earlier today includes... Harold Adams, Travis Belgrave, Travis Burnett, Earl on Glasgow, Delroy James, Gordon James, Anthony Moe, Stanton Rose, Yannick Tappin, Timothy Thompson, Shane Webster and Kevon Wiggins. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV Sports Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. 
Cayenne is a sole distributor of NP and Ultra Lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and Napa batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice. Now for some news in the region. The new president of Brazil has put forward a plan to revamp the country's pension system, tackling a reform considered critical to boasting growth of South America's biggest economy. The proposal would set a minimum retirement age of 65 for men and 62 for women, among other changes. The government said the overhaul would save more than 1 trillion reyes to 210 billion pounds over the next decade. But opposition parties argue the changes would penalize the poorest. The proposal must be approved by both houses of Congress. Many previous governments in Brazil have tried but failed to reform the country's pension system, which is running large deficits, a situation expected to worsen in coming decades as the country's population ages. President Jair Bolsonaro, a far-right politician who was elected last year, said this issue would be the number one priority at the start of his new government. On international scene, civilians have been evacuated from the last village in Syria still held by the Islamic State ISIS group. The convoy on Wednesday carried hundreds of men, women and children from Bagos near the Iraqi border. The U.S.-backed Syrian Democratic Forces Alliance have said they are waiting to, for their removal before launching an offensive against militants entrenched inside. The SDF say it cannot confirm if any militants were among the passengers. Those removed will be taken to a screening point, according to SDF spokesman Mustafa Bali. There have been conflicting reports on how close the SDF is to raiding the enclave of ISIS fighters. The U.S.-led coalition fighting ISIS has said the most hardened fighters remain within Bagos. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 813. Let's turn our attention to the Demerara Harbour Bridge and Burbies River Bridge schedules. That's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Court of Appeal sends Attorney General to correct his error-riddled application for a stay on the no-confidence vote. PPP's Gail Teixeira scolds Professor Duke Pollard over attack on CJ's ruling on no-confidence motion. Government using state resources for political campaign. And in sport, Chris Gale announces return to one-day internationals with blistering ton. Catch our rebroadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I am Lashona Gomes Cornelius. Good night.